Hi there, welcome to a rare edition of, um, a Saturday edition, I should say, of IndyCar. And um, I don't usually post IndyCar um, programs on a Saturday, but uh, a particular um, subject cropped up and came across my message list this morning. I think it's worth mentioning it to you. Now, if I said to you, um, do you know that Scotland has a space programme? You'd probably laugh out loud and say, what are you talking about? Scotland has never had a space programme. It's never going to have a space programme. Well, you'd be wrong. Scotland not only has a space programme, but there is a space race on in Scotland at the moment as well. Now, way back in the 70s, um, in fact, I have to go even further back than that, a bigger part, let's go back to the 1960s. The United Kingdom had its own rocket launcher back then. And in those days, Britain um, thought of itself as an international player in terms of world politics. And to be an international player at the time, in order to equal countries like uh, Russia and America, who had uh, space industries and who had rockets in space, you needed to have your own space launcher. And Britain did it on the cheap back then, way back in the 1950s, early 60s, they developed a, their own rocket based on captured World War II technology um, from Werner von Braun's uh, V2 rockets. And this was a type of engine which, to be honest with you, has not been used uh, for launching satellites or even human beings into space ever, as far as I know. But the wonderful thing about this technology is it's now been fully developed by a Scottish company based in Edinburgh into a working rocket which is capable of launching satellites into orbit. And not only is it capable of doing that, it's one of the greenest rockets uh, in the world because the fuel it uses is hydrogen peroxide, which is basically like water with an extra hydrogen atom added to it. Uh, sorry, an extra uh, oxygen atom added to a big fern. Anyway, hydrogen peroxide is a liquid, which is, you've probably heard of it, it's used in things like bleaching hair normally. But if you strengthen it and increase the strength of it up to about 90% purity, it becomes what's called high test peroxide. High test peroxide or HTP. Now, high test peroxide is quite unstable, and if you happen to uh, pass hydrogen peroxide over silver of any kind, it automatically uh, undergoes a very violent chemical reaction which flashes it into steam at incredibly high temperature, over 600 degrees Celsius, in a second or two. And that resulting jet of steam can be used to power a rocket. But not only that, but the jet of steam also contains extra oxygen, which can be used uh, as a rocket um, oxidizer in space. Now, initially, the British government developed a small launcher, um, which was called the Black Knight, which was capable of lobbing about... Uh, something about the size of a small human being into orbit, about 100 pounds of... Uh, of payload into orbit. And Britain launched one single satellite of its own using its own rocket uh, before the whole thing was cancelled in 19, uh, when was it, 1967, I think they cancelled it because they didn't want to queer the pitch for the Americans who were engaged in a real space race against the Russians at the time. Eventually in 1971, <clears throat> the British did succeed in launching a satellite from a test range at Woomera in Australia and that satellite, to my knowledge, is still orbiting the Earth, called Prospero. But since then, the British state has not indulged in building rockets at all, and in fact has happily busied itself building satellites instead. So there's not been, until now, any British space launcher, no rocket built in Britain capable of taking satellites into orbit. Except that's all about to change, thanks to a company based in Edinburgh called Skyrora. Now, what you probably don't know is that Skyrora, which is a Scottish company, which has developed a rocket which has already had its engines tested uh, in ground tests and is ready to fly, has a rival. And its rival is called Orbex. Orbex is a company which was created by a member of the British Secret Service alongside some German companies, uh, one or two other small European companies, and with a large injection of money from the American arms manufacturer Lockheed Martin. So this is a collaboration between the British state, uh, the American military, and one or two small European specialist um, manufacturers. And the idea of Orbex was for Britain, not Scotland, for Britain, in other words, London, to be the first to create a launcher for firing satellite from Scotland into polar orbits. You might know that there has been um, 
a competition, I suppose you would call it, for which um, which area is going to be the, the British spaceport or space ports uh, for space tourism, for satellite launches and so forth. And it's still not been decided. There are, are, are several different um, uh, finalists, if you like, in the shortlist, but one of them um, will win. The British have decided on a site in Sutherland, which is a, a huge expanse of empty moorland with no roads in, no power in, no water in, no sewage in, no access in. And they plan to spend about three and a half million pounds of yours and my tax money building a concrete pad and a blockhouse there to launch rockets. And Lockheed Martin are backing this. The problem with Orbex is that they are a shell company. At the moment, they don't really exist. They don't have a rocket. They haven't made, as far as I know, any actual working hardware, although I'll need to check on that. They have showed off models at um, some great expense in a massive TV reveal, but they were just models. Nothing functional had been built. Nothing, as far as I know, has been tested or test fired or test flown. Unlike the smaller company Skyrora in Edinburgh, which has not only built the hardware, but also manufactures its own oxidizers and manufactures its own eco-friendly fuel, which it makes from recycling polystyrene, that stuff that you can't get rid of uh, when you buy a fridge. So Skyrora are locked in this battle with Orbex. And what's interesting about it is where Orbex is getting its money from. Skyrora has had uh, about £1.5 million given to it through the uh, Scottish Government and the Highlands and Islands Enterprise uh, Company or agency, whatever it's now called. And they are well ahead in this uh, race to be the first to launch. Uh, I witnessed a couple of the test firings in the, at their Edinburgh uh, facilities where they test fired the smaller upper stages. They have now test fired the first stage, the biggest rocket of all, in, in a live fire test and it run perfectly for the entire run. The only thing it didn't do was fly because they bolted it down. So they are ready to go and they favour launching from the far north of Scotland using one of the commercial sites which has been identified by local businesses uh, to launch satellites from the north of Scotland or the islands in the north of Scotland over the North Pole and then coming back under the South Pole. So we're going to an orbit which is at 90 degrees to where most satellites orbit but where they can study the polar ice and the um, diminishing amount of polar ice and the way that things are changing in the Northern Hemisphere because of global warming. There's a huge market, something I think in a region of 200 million pounds worth of small satellites waiting to be launched into orbits like this, but can't find a launcher to, uh, to launch them. So there's a market out there. Scotland stands a very good chance of being able to exploit this market by firing rockets from its own territory <clears throat> over the north part of the uh, Atlantic and over the poles. Orbex, uh, as I said, set up by the British state as a rival to Scotland. Now what's uh, emerged is that there are concerns by people who have contacted me that Orbex, this shell company started by the British state and its um, allies in the American military uh, and, and the uh, Department of Defence is is really there to try and steal the march, to try and get there first so that Scotland does not have its own indigenous space programme before Britain manages to develop its. So there is a, a political goal uh, for this as far as the British government is concerned and it's a, a sort of miniature version of what the Americans and the Russians were doing in the 60s where they had they, they wanted to develop space and show the rest of the world their technical superiority uh, and the fact that they were capable of developing this technology by themselves. We also know now that Scotland is quite capable, capable of not only developing this technology, but building it, test firing it and having it ready to fly by the end of this current year. So if there is a space race now uh, between Skyrora in Scotland and Orbex, uh, in England or, or Germany or, or America or wherever the hell they are actually based. If there is a real competition, Skyrora at the moment at least are a long way ahead. The reason the alarm bells have started ringing is that Skyrora apparently have just announced that they have had two lots of funding from Highlands and Islands uh, Enterprise, HIE, 
and apparently they've had fairly low figures, but around about sort of 400,000, 600,000, smallish sums, but still appreciable amounts of money, uh, taxpayers' money, which has gone to this company, which is being run by an ex-Secret uh, Service man, uh, in conjunction with a German company and an American arms manufacturer. So this consortium, this Orbex consortium, which exists, it seems, only in the internet at the moment, has got a large chunk of our tax money as well. And that rang alarm bells with the number of people who contacted me recently to mention this. So I'm putting it out there so that you know. Skyrora is a Scottish company. It has built its rockets in Scotland. It has three in fact, it might even have four different uh, sites in Scotland for both manufacturing rockets, manufacturing fuel, test firing the engines, and it will have several test flight uh, locations in the northeast of Scotland at the moment. Where it will eventually be launched from fully, I don't know. That's being kept a bit of a secret at the moment. But I do know that the rocket itself ran perfectly first time and they expect to do some more testing through the summer with it still bolted down just to check that that is true. If so, then I think they will be ready to do their first demonstration launch above what's known as the Carmen Line, which is a rocket flight straight up out of the atmosphere into space, at least 90 kilometers above the surface of the Earth to qualify it as a space flight. This will be the very first time in history that Scotland has launched its own rocket designed and built here into space from its own territory ever. And I think this is something which mark, will mark the start of a high technology industry, which will use, remember, the most rural parts of Scotland uh, as part of its, um, its business model, because we need a launch site either in the north of Scotland or perhaps somewhere like Shetland. I know there are sites, uh, there is a site in Shetland at the moment which is being developed, and I believe there are other sites in other parts of the north of Scotland. Uh, so that is the situation that, that uh, we're in at the moment, but I just wanted to alert you to the fact, because most people do not realise that Scotland has a space programme at all, but it does. And it's also responsible for uh, the invention of all kinds of other space-related gear and equipment, including uh, at Strathclyde University, uh, a spacecraft which is capable of defending the planet from rogue asteroids, which uses massive amounts of solar power uh, from this device uh, to power a massive laser, which is capable not of blowing this, uh, the asteroids up, but of actually turning them into little rockets where the, the laser beam burns away at the surface of the asteroid and produces a beam or a sort of plume of thrust. Fascinating ideas. All kinds of hardware have been developed uh, at Strathclyde University. They have one of the most active and probably the most original um, space engineering departments of any university in, in the whole of the UK. So we have the capability. We also have Clyde Space, which is a Glasgow-based um, satellite manufacturer, which makes more satellites than almost anybody else in the world. So the industry is ready to go. Uh, what we have to be sure of is that the Scottish companies get there before Orbex, because Orbex, as, I, as I'm trying to tell you, is the British attempt to steal the limelight from the Scots in achieving this for themselves. It would look very bad, let's put it this way, if a Scottish company was the first ever to fire a genuine space shot from Scottish soil into space, bring it back down safely. It would, well, it would make Britain look a little bit smaller, let's put it that way, and it would do Scotland's chances uh, on the world stage in terms of its... Um, it's space tourism, it's space commercial, uh, it's commercial space operations, and its abilities to launch satellites over the poles would be almost unique. So there are many reasons for doing this, and it could bring thousands of jobs and millions of pounds into the Scottish economy every year. It sounds like science fiction, but it's not, and it's happening right now. I've reported on it before uh, on this show. I've also reported on it in many posts. I'll put up some photographs of uh, Skyrora's rocket engine and one or two other pieces of hardware. I'll see if I can find uh, the original footage of the last uh, first stage rocket test that they did, which uh, I think it fired for over 30 seconds continuously without fault. These things are milestones in Scotland's um, aerospace history, uh, but they're going past unremarked because we do not have a media which wants to report them. 
Uh, in fact, we have a media which desperately doesn't want to report them and only wants to report what Orbex is doing because it's British. We have the same problem when it comes to electric aircraft being tested on the island routes in the north of Scotland. So uh, the island hopper routes in Shetland are going to be, they're going to trial electric aircraft on them next year. And I had hoped, and I'm still trying to hope, I'm still trying to arrange for an Italian company that I know um, run by a friend, which has designed a twin engine electric aircraft from scratch, uh, which also uses solar power to recharge itself. Their only competition, and believe it or not, they want to come to Scotland and set up a factory here and employ people to produce these aircraft if they're successful. But their, their competitors are another British uh, Ministry of Defence company, Britain Norman, who are based in England in the Isle of Wight. Now, I have nothing against Britain Norman. Their Islander aeroplanes have been serving uh, Shetland reliably for donkey's years, but they're now old and a bit out of date. And of course, they they are not environmentally friendly. And to have a plane which uses nothing but solar energy and renewable energy produced by Scotland's wind turbines and its sea energy would be a wonderful thing. But as I said, the competition isn't coming from abroad. It's coming from England. It's coming from Britain. And this is the same with the space race. All of our competition in technological terms is coming from what is supposed to be our friends in the South, who are really trying to do what they did with the oil business back in the 70s and seize it for themselves and claim it as British. Well, I think if, um, uh, if Skyroar are successful, we will have our own fully functioning space programme operating from Edinburgh and operating from sites in the north of Scotland and the Northern Isles in the next two years. And if that is the case, it stands Scotland in good stead for when we're independent, we must will be one of the only small countries of our size with an active space programme, something that we can really, really be proud of. And I'm particularly pleased to have been invited um, to witness some of the testing that Skyrora has done, and I'm hoping at some point through Broadcasting Scotland in the future to write uh, and produce a documentary on this company and how it has managed to do what it has done with so little. Uh, the company is remarkable. It is full of people with enormous creativity and energy, and the rocket they have designed is a little masterpiece of engineering even down to the fact that they produce their own fuel and their own oxidizer. Nothing is taken from outside. The company does everything itself. It's a remarkable story and one which eventually I hope to be able to tell you in full. Anyway, that's it for today. Just a little bit of um, something different for Saturday. I hope to see you all again uh, maybe tomorrow, but in the meantime, I'll see you later. Bye-bye for now.